tell you two pieces of feedback that I'm getting from people throughout the state. And the feedback, sadly, is increasing more and more. First of all, people are worried about their life savings. They're worried about their 401ks or any money that they have invested at this point in time. People are worried about how I'm going to make it the next month. Will my job still be there? Now, more than ever, we need a leader who understands the economy, and we need a leader who's going to fight for jobs in North Carolina. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've got 13 years of experience in the public sector and 28 years of experience in the private sector working to bring jobs. And the way you do that is threefold. First of all, you build relationships and you respect small and medium and large sized businesses and build a relationship and say, I thank you for investing in our state. You don't treat them as though they're the enemy. You treat them as partners because they are the ones that are creating jobs. They are the ones that are providing the taxes to build these schools. They are the ones that are putting food on our plate. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to bring jobs in North Carolina and make sure they stay. And the second thing we need to make sure, we don't want a tax system in North Carolina that punishes people for working. And right now, we have the highest income tax in the southeast. We can't even compete with South Carolina nearby. We're not even in the same league as Tennessee. And Virginia also is much lower. If I have a chance to cut a tax, the first tax I will cut will be the income tax because that's a tax that's working people. second thing I want to do is this. I want to get North Carolina in the energy business. Does that make sense? I want to get North Carolina in the energy business. Listen, as long as this country is dependent upon Nigeria and Venezuela and Saudi Arabia and Russia, our national security and our economic security is at great risk. Do you agree with me? Why should North Carolina be a part of the solution? Why should we be exempt from saying, you know what, we're going to help America become more independent? Because the more independent you are, the more freedom we have. And right now, we're dependent upon other countries throughout the world. And as long as that happens, as long as that happens, we're always going to have a crisis where the gas will spike up beyond four dollars a gallon, then it'll drop again, and then it'll, it will go up again. And you know, just in this area of the state, just in the last three or four weeks, you haven't been able to find gas, have you? And the gas got pretty expensive. And ladies and gentlemen, we need to get the energy business and create jobs. I believe in nuclear power. I believe in clean coal. Wind and solar. I believe in conservation. I'm a conservative. I believe in conservation. I also believe in offshore drilling for natural gas and oil as soon as possible. Now, my opponent, Beverly Perdue, just 10 weeks ago at a Farm Bureau speech, I was in the audience, she said the following. She said, I, she said she was 100% opposed to offshore drilling for natural gas and oil. And then she said it will not happen on her watch. She's right. It's going to happen on my watch. It's going to happen. The third thing I want to talk to you about jobs is this. And this is probably the most serious problem we have in North Carolina right now, even during the downturn of the economy. As I go around the state and visit many employers, and I have many employers in Western North Carolina during this campaign, you know what the number one piece of feedback I hear from the employers? We can't find qualified employees to do the work. We have a large age group of 50 to 60 year old people who will be retiring who are mechanics and electricians and welders and plumbers. Some of them are named Joe. And they're leaving the workforce. 
and we can't find the 20 to 30 year old to take their place. And yet at the same time, we have a 30% dropout rate in our high schools throughout the state. Isn't there a disconnect between the 30% dropout rate and we can't find qualified employees to do basic work, which requires good skills? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to get back to the basics of education. I make another promise to you. I'm not going to start a new education program that rhymes. What I want to do is get our, like, allow our teachers to get back to the basics. We're going to throw out the calculators in elementary school and get our kids to learn more. Jamestown, North Carolina, we had a choice of two different curriculums. One curriculum to go to college, if you wanted to go to college. I have to do that. And another curriculum where you could go learn vocational training and learn a trade. In my day, it was called shop. Did y'all take shop classes? Ladies and gentlemen, we got to start respecting shop classes again. Because what we're doing, we're directing a lot of kids who maybe don't want to go to college because they have other skills and attributes, which I greatly admire. My dad had those skills. He could fix anything. He could fix anything. My wife says, I can fix nothing at home. <laughs> so I admire men and women who can fix things. And right now, we need to reintroduce and reemphasize vocational training in our high schools so we can find qualified labor to meet the labor needs of North Carolina. Because if we can't meet the labor needs of North Carolina, I can't help you recruit new businesses and keep existing businesses. We have to have qualified labor.